Hi everyone. I thought I would check in and read a story for you all. And uh, this is the story I chose, Frog Medicine. I hope you're all um, having fun. There's some nice weather outside. I hope you're able to enjoy it while you're staying at home. Um, this story was one of my kids' favorites when they were little. And it is by Mark Teague. And let's get started. See the best way to do this. Elmo Freem wasn't paying attention the morning Mrs. Drindle brought in books for book reports. In fact, he was so busy watching a strange insect crawl across his desk that he failed to notice his classmates going to choose their books. By the time he realized what was happening, it was too late. The only book left was a small, shabby, greenish thing with an odd title. Elmo groaned when he read it. Frog Medicine, read the cover by Dr. Frank Galoof. That afternoon, Elmo tried trading the book for something better, but the other kids just laughed. Frog medicine, they shouted. Who cares about that? Secretly, Elmo agreed. Frogs were dull creatures, in his opinion, good only for eating bugs and sitting in puddles. How interesting could the book be? When he got home, he threw it into his closet without even looking at it. I'll read it later, he told his cat, Leon. The week passed and things got worse. The longer Elmo put off the project, the harder it seemed. Everyone else was enjoying the assignment. Roy Plumpton was reading a book called Common Household Monsters, and Arthur Flux had already finished his report on the lost dinosaurs of Terror Island. Even Buford Snark, who rarely did schoolwork at all, was clearly enjoying Space Aliens and You. It all seemed very unfair. Elmo tried to think about another, more pleasant subject. But his thoughts kept drifting back to the book in his closet. At the same time, it seemed as though there were frogs everywhere he looked. I wish they would all just go away, he thought. That night, before the report was due, Elmo began to panic. He took out paper and a pencil and sat down at the desk in his bedroom. I haven't got time to read the book, he told Leon. I'll just make up something. But try as he might, he could think of nothing to say. He fell asleep, still worrying. The next morning was dark and rainy. Elmo felt sick. I can't go to school, he told his mother. She looked at him closely and felt his forehead. Maybe a nice hot bath would help, she said. Get into the tub and I'll run to the store for some medicine. In the bathtub, Elmo made a terrible discovery. His feet had grown long, slimy, and green. There were webs between his toes. Oh, no, he cried. I'm turning into a frog. Just then he remembered the book. Frog medicine. That's what I need. And he hopped out of the tub to get it. He didn't even need to open the book to find what he wanted. Dr. Galoof's phone number was printed on the back cover. He'll know what to do, said Elmo, as he hopped to the phone. The doctor answered on the first ring, and he listened patiently as Elmo explained his problem. Ah, that's very rare, he said. His voice was deep and gravelly. Wait outside. I'll send a cab to bring you to my office. A few minutes later, Elmo and Leon were standing on the sidewalk in front of their apartment building. It was raining heavily. Great waterfalls fell down from the rooftops, and the streets ran like rivers. Leon, who didn't like the rain much, hid under Elmo's shirt. The cab that came to pick them up was unlike any Elmo had seen before. It was covered with patches of deep green moss, and when it moved, it made a loud, wet croaking sound. The driver was equally as strange. Although he wore a tall hat, he was so short that they could barely see him over the top of the seat. He sang an odd, burping song as he drove, though Elmo wasn't quite able to make out the words. Still, he was very nice, and he told them both to make themselves comfortable.
With all the wet weather, the cab seemed to float along, rushing down side streets until Elmo was lost. At some point, he became certain that they really were floating. The rain slowed, and the streets became like quiet ponds. Enormous lily pads floated on the surface. The buildings, already still, although still very tall, were wet and mossy, and many were hung with vines. A sign read, Welcome to Frogtown. Imagine that, said Elmo. Dr. Galoof's office was at the end of the street, or pond, Elmo couldn't decide which, and it was partly underwater. Elmo thanked the driver as they got out. He waded to the front door with Leon perched on his shoulder. What a strange place, he said. Even though, even so, they were both surprised by the appearance of Dr. Galoof. Although he wore a lab coat and a stethoscope, the doctor was clearly a frog. Welcome, he said cheerfully, and what seems to be the problem? He looks a little nervous. Elmo didn't know quite where to begin, so he told the doctor about his trouble with school and about the book report he had been unable to write. Ah, yes, said the doctor, as he pulled the book from his shelf. Frog Medicine, a wonderful book, if I do say so myself. How did you like it? Well, Elmo was very embarrassed. He told the doctor how he'd been meaning to read the book, but that he kept putting it off until it was too late. Dr. Galoof smiled. Well, there's your problem, he said. Go home and read, then write your report. But you don't understand, said Elmo, and he lifted his foot out of the water. I'm turning into a frog. It's no surprise, said the doctor. You see, the longer you put a problem off, the worse it becomes. It's all in my book. Elmo was not convinced. I thought you might have some medicine, he began. Dr. Galoof shook his head. Just do your homework. That The rest should take care of itself. Since it was nearly lunchtime, the doctor took them out to eat. The restaurant was colorful in a swampy sort of way, and although the food was not very appetizing to Elmo, Leon didn't seem to mind. Dr. Galoof was a pleasant host. With Leon, he discussed the art of catching flies, and he told them both a great deal about Frogtown. I had no idea frogs led such interesting lives, said Elmo. You really should read more, said the doctor. After lunch, Dr. Galoof put them back into the cab. You shouldn't be late getting home, he said. Time moves pretty slowly here in Frogtown. Then he gave them both slimy hugs and sent them on their way. Read the book, he shouted to Elmo as they pulled away. I think you'll enjoy it. Elmo did enjoy the book. He opened it up as soon as they got home and found that it was full of interesting facts and strange pictures. As he read, he began to feel better. By the time he finished reading, his worries were gone and his feet had returned to normal. When his mother came back from the store, she was happy to see him feeling so good. She put the medicine away and smiled. You should be well enough for school tomorrow, she said. Back to normal. Standing at his window, Elmo looked out over the city. The storm had blown away and the streets were drying under a warm afternoon sun. Leon lay on the windowsill. Elmo smiled and sat down to write his report. The end.